Hello everyone, it's Travis with CoCab, Watch Collectors of California and Beyond, with another full watch review. Today we're going to be looking at the Revolut Admiral GMT Grey Storm Steel. Beautiful looking watch. So uh, you may or may not know, but this was a brand that was founded by Kevin Hotch in 2017. Uh, Revolut makes great, unique watches. I really enjoy them. I have several myself. This is the newest one that I've seen, and I really, really like it a lot. The name itself is a combination of Revel and Zealot, which I didn't really even know until I got uh, doing the research for this review. So that's supposed to represent an unwavering passion, and it kind of seems perfect for the, the watches. I've never known for sure how to pronounce this, but now that I know it is a combo of Revel and Zealot, then I'm going to go with Revelit, because that seems like the, the best combination of those two words. Um, Revlon makes really nice watches and they do so at a very affordable price and we'll kind of get into the details of this one here in just one second. Just a reminder what makes a CoCab review different. The C stands for the characteristics of the watch. We'll talk about those. The O is the operations. The next C is cool and unique features. Accessibility is the A. That's both availability and price. And uh, B is the brand offerings and, and info. So. Some of the characteristics of this watch, the Admiral GMT is inspired from the literal, I think is how you pronounce it, combat ship, which was a surface vessel designed for military operations near shores. And with its 200 meter water resistance, you can actually see that right there in the dial, it seems to be the perfect timepiece for near shore activities. So, all right, let's jump into it. The basic specs, this is about 13.5 millimeters thick. You can see the thickness there. You can also see the nice signed crown. Uh, it weighs about 206 grams when it's sized for an eight and a quarter inch wrist on the metal bracelet. Diameter is about 41.5 millimeters, both the case and the bezel. Uh, it's about 47 millimeters at the four o'clock crown. So you can see the crown sticks at about four millimeters there, a little bit a little bit more. It kind of is in set, so it's a little bit different uh, depending on where you measure it. And it's about 48.5 millimeters lug to lug. While we're on this view, I just love that side profile, all the different angles and the chamfered edges, the inset four o'clock crown, some really nice look there. And then you also notice the, the case is kind of a elongated octagon. So there's eight distinct sides kind of stretched out a bit. I really like it, something just a little bit different. Uh, it is water resistant to 200 meters and it does have a two year warranty. So those are some of the basic specs. The dial, as you can see, is one of the coolest things, I think. It has a Whirlpool style dial that is kind of reminiscent of the, the ocean. You can see that and real quick, we'll, we'll talk about the case back in a minute, but I do want to point out, you've got something kind of similar on the back as well. So nice design elements there. Uh, the first thing you may notice is that there's no numbers on the dial itself, which I kind of like. It keeps it nice and clean and helps you focus on what I think is one of the coolest parts of the watch, and that is the, the loomed area that kind of is uh, designed to represent the loom. I'm sorry, the dials or, or the radar on a ship. I'm going to go ahead and charge the loom up here, and you'll get a better, better view of that right here in a second here. But you can kind of see really nice loom, how that looks. And again, it's just taking its design inspiration from the ship, so it's pretty cool. You'll see also on that is you've got the inner bezel track. You can see there with the orange numbers. It's kind of a slanted rehot. It's on 24 hour time, numbered from one to 24. That can be used with the GMT hand. And you can see that there with the, the orange arrow on the edge of it there. You can see on the dial itself, it says the Revolut on uh, the top of the dial between the center of the watch and the 12 o'clock. And then it says Admiral GMT in orange writing there between the six o'clock and center. And then also automatic in 200 meters. Um, the dial is, is kept clean again with those 24 hour GMT markings. There's a little bit better view of those. The hands, uh, you've got the middle, the minute, hour, second, and GMT all centrally positioned. And all but the seconds hand have a uh, loom on them. The hour and minute hand, I'll try to get a good view of those <clears throat> pretty cool there you can kind of see the reflections on them but they are chamfered with mirror on the side and brushed on the top and they have a generous amount of super luminova on those they look really nice there 
Seconds hand is thin, straight, and orange, which I think contrasts well. Goes great with the the one to fifteen minute uh, orange area on the the bezel there, as well as the GMT hand. The GMT, of course, is thin, black, straight, and it has the orange outlined loomed triangle on the end there. <coughs> Excuse me. Second hand and indexes mimic a radar-like animation, which we talked about previously. The date window is at six o'clock. You can see it right there. I like how it's just kind of integrated right into the loomed area mimicking the dial or the radar of a ship. Date colors are white with black numerals. And I feel like they're just positioned well there and they blend well with the design of the watch. The indices we talked about already has the slanted Rehot track, has 24 numerals, a top horizontal dashed lines. You can see those there. No numbers on the dial itself. And then 20, 30, 40, and 50 are enumerated on the bezel with one minute marked indice lines all the way around. The loom is either Swiss C3 Superluminova, BGW9, or Old Radium, depending on the model. The bezel is the unidirectional rotating, let you listen to it. And this is the 120 click. It is a ceramic bezel, has the loomed orange, I went too far there, 15 minute section and loomed minute markers, and then the 20, 30, 40, and 50. There we go. Um, you've also got the upside down loomed outlined triangle. Here, I'll throw the loom on it again. You can see that right at the 12 o'clock position. The bezel is about four millimeters thick, and you can see it's got the kind of the knurled grip on it as well as the knurled grip on the crown there. It does line up perfectly at the 12 o'clock as I looked at it. I think it's a little bit off at the, the 50. You can see the 50 and the 20 do not line up perfectly. And then the 20 at the four o'clock, just a little bit off. Uh, nothing horrible, but just a little bit. Uh, the 12 o'clock though does seem to line up really well on, on that. The crystal is AR coated, chamfered flat sapphire crystal. Has really good uh, AR on it for the most part. Uh, the case is brushed 316L stainless steel. One thing I love about this watch is it just about won't uh, get messed up with fingerprints and it just stays looking really, really nice. Again, you've got the unique stretched octagon shape that we talked about and it's got very cool angles, especially when you view it from the side. Let's see if we can get the light to kind of play off of those. I really, really like it. And then also when you look at it from like dead on on the lugs, you can see also just some of the design elements there. So very nice looking uh, case there. Uh, you've got the crown at the four o'clock position. It is, oops, got the watch upside down. It is screwed down with O-rings, round, knurled, and good grip. It's about 6.9 millimeters in diameter, and it's inset into the case. You can see that right here. Kind of see how that goes inset into the case itself there. It is signed with the unilateral logo, and it looks great in any position. The lugs again um, are 48.5 lug to lug. They are not drilled. I always like drilled lugs, but this does have, I'll just throw that right now into there, the quick release uh, bracelet. So you got a double sided quick release bracelet uh, on both sides of the, the bracelet there. So that's cool. Uh, the lug width is 22 millimeters. And um, the bracelet I wanted to point out does taper from 22 millimeters the first two links tapers down to 20, and then it's 20 from there on down to the actual clasp, which is signed with both the logo and the name. The clasp is a double-sided, and it works well. If you only do one side or the other, it will not open, so you gotta do both sides. And also, I wanna just kinda point out, it is a on-the-fly adjustment. You just push that, and you can see that pulls out, and then you can push it into whatever level that you want. It does have about one full length. If you watch from here to there, and then the distance from there to the next link, it's about one full length um, that you got for adjustment. So that works out really well. More than that, you just take a link out. Case back. It's not an exhibition case back, but it is a nicely designed case back. It says R10 Admiral GMT 200, Japan Automatic Sapphire Glass, 316L stainless steel, and it does have the groove screw down decorated embossed case back with the logo and the whirlpool action to match the front dial. Again, pretty nice design elements. 
All right, let's look at the packaging. I'm gonna set the watch down. <clears throat> Here's the box that it came in. See the marking, it's black with kind of a gold trim, which looks really nice. Inside of it is the cushion pillow the watch came in. And then you've got a, an extra chamber that comes with the back, um, the warranty card, but you've got a whole other section there that you can put an extra strap in or even a second watch or whatever you might like. The warranty card talks about the two-year warranty, and it also has on the back a watch setting manual, which was pretty cool. It actually has the setting instructions for all the various models, including this one. And then you've got the warranty information as well right there. So good stuff there. All right, so the operation side, the movement on this is a Seiko NH34 GMT automatic. You may know that's a 24 joule movement, 41 hours of power reserve, about 21,600 vibrations per hour. And it does have the Seiko Diashock anti-shock system. This movement was released around the summer of 2022 and is a very reliable uh, movement for you. The experiences I had with it, winding, very smooth, proper amount of tension. We'll just do some of it together. Unscrewing the crown is about four partial turns. And uh, there went four and a half, I guess. But as you uh, wind it, it's just very nice and smooth. Oh, there you see a, a little bit better picture of those hands too. Setting the time, very smooth. Well, first I'm gonna do one click out. So one click out, you can set the GMT hand. You can see it goes one hour at a time. And then the, the opposite way you can set the date and it clicks right into place very nicely. And then when you set the time, one of the things I really liked about this, if you watch the knurled crown there, you'll see there's almost no, it's, I would say probably a tenth of a turn or less before the hands engage, which is a little bit better than some of the watches that I've looked at. So really good movement there. Um, turning the bezel. Let me go ahead and screw the crown back in just so I don't forget that. Again, it's about four screws and then you're good. Turning the bezel, it's unidirectional. It could have a little bit more grip. I'll show you there. It's nothing bad, but it's not as grippy as what it could be. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you look at both the, the crown and the bezel together, the crown has pretty good grip. It's a little bit more uh, pronounced grooves, I guess, if you will, on it. But the, the bezel is fine. It's not, pro it's not a problem. It's just not as grippy as, as some. Um, Let's see here. What could be improved? I would say I love drilled lugs, so that would be great if it had those. The micro adjust um, is really good. I really like it. When it first got here, it was a little bit, I'll try to get it where you can see it. It was a little bit difficult to get it to go in just one at a time and just a little bit uh, rough, I guess, to go in and out. Yeah, kind of seeing some of that now. Um, there we go. Nothing bad, but just uh, I think it's just going to be with use a few times doing it. It'll probably move into place a little bit easier. And then, of course, the bezel that I talked about. And then if I have to nitpick, the alignment, again, we talked about is just a little bit off. Nothing bad. Um, one thing, just a, more of a notice to, to anyone that looks at the time setting manual, it has pictures of the bezel turning clockwise when it actually turns clock uh, counterclockwise, it will not go clockwise. So just to, to point that out. And the directions for adjusting the GMT and date are exactly the same on the graphic in the manual. So no big deal there. Uh, when I received this, I don't know uh, it, who had put it on, uh, but the bracelet was on backwards. And so I made quick use of the easy release. The one thing I did notice is the spring bars will fall out. Some are kind of kept into place unless you uh, Work hard to get them out. These ones will fall out, so no big deal. But just a heads up, I do love the quick release spring bars. It makes it so much easier. All right, so cool and unique and what I love. I love that dial design, something unique. And it really, that, that radar look with the Whirlpool look, I, I just think it works. And then if you don't like this colorway, you'll have to check out. They've got a lot of other uh, options for this exact watch, so it's pretty cool. Love the ship references, the radar loom. I love the hands, uh, the on-the-fly adjustment bracelet. Even though it sticks a little bit sometimes, that is so nice when you go through a day. And then that cool case back that matches the dial. 
Just a lot of things I love about this watch. And then again, it doesn't collect fingerprints. You've seen me handle it this whole time and it still looks great. So really, really like that. One of the other things I have to say that I love is its price. It's available right now for $269, which is just amazing, I think, for this watch. Um, so accessibility is, you know, both how affordable it is and how available it is. Check it out. You can go to revelot.com, R-E-V-E-L-O-T.com, and check out their whole website. There's tons of other models. They do have a black DLC of this exact watch coming out. Uh, or I think it's actually out, and then an Admiral GMT Damascus that's going to be available on the 23rd of April, 2024, so just a few days. So thank you so much for watching. Please put any comments uh, on the, the actual video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a fantastic rest of the day.